101 crazy music facts everyone should know. When the Eagles broke up in 1980, Don Henley said in an interview that they would play again together when hell freezes over. 14 years later, the Eagles released their comeback album, Hell Freezes Over. Pink Floyd's The Wall is implied to be an endless loop. The final song, Outside the Wall, ends with the words, Isn't This Where? And the album begins with the words, we came in with a continuation of the melody of the last song, hinting at the cyclical nature of Roger Waters' theme. The title of the Cream album, Disraeli Gears, came when Eric Clapton mentioned wanting a racing bicycle to a roadie, and the roadie said, oh yeah, Disraeli Gears, meaning to say, derailleur gears. Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam was smoking so much pot that he installed a fireman's pole in his home so he could get to his studio faster so he didn't forget ideas for songs or lyrics he was creating. The music genre shoegaze got its name from British critics mocking the musicians always looking down at their shoes while playing instead of the audience. In reality, the musicians had to focus on the numerous music effect pedals in their playlist. Shakira was rejected from her school choir because her music teacher said that she sounded like a goat. In 2009, Bob Dylan was detained in New Jersey after he wandered into the yard of a home that had a for sale sign on it. Not recognizing Bob Dylan, the home's occupants became spooked by his appearance and called 911. He was then taken to his tour bus where he had to verify his identity. When Led Zeppelin reunited in 2007 for a one-off show at the O2 Arena in London, 20 million ticket requests were made, the record for a single music concert. The electronic music pioneer, Giorgio Moroder, once released an album with Michael Holm titled Spinach, whose cover art featured a nude woman covered in the titular vegetable. Two trapped miners from Australia once asked for an iPod with the Foo Fighters music on it to keep their spirit up. After hearing this, Dave Grohl wrote a note saying, I want you to know that when you come home, there's two tickets to any Foo's show anywhere and two cold beers waiting for you. David Bowie briefly considered becoming a Buddhist monk. After a few months study at Tibet House in London, he was told by a Lama, you don't want to be Buddhist, you should follow music. Keith Flint of The Prodigy became a popular pub owner in Essex following his music career. Flint eventually brought in a jar to collect one pound fines from customers who referenced the song Firestar as he tended to the pub's fireplace. In 1949, B.B. King re-entered a burning music hall to save his favorite $30 Gibson guitar. He later learned the fire was started when two men knocked over a burning barrel of kerosene while fighting over a woman named Lucille. King has named every guitar he's owned Lucille as a reminder. The Shags were a tone-deaf and musically inept musical group from the 60s formed by their father, who was convinced they would one day become famous. They produced one album, Philosophy of the World, that over time became a highly sought after oddity by record collectors. Blur's Song 2 was intended to be a joke on their record company. To their surprise, the executives loved the song, released it as a single, and it became one of their biggest hits. After the band Weezer covered the song Africa by Toto, Toto covered the song Hash Pipe by Weezer as a response. While writing the popular 1990s song Friday I'm In Love, the Cure frontman Robert Smith became convinced that he stole the tune from somewhere and was so paranoid that he called every person he knew and played the song for them, asking if they recognized it. It was indeed unique. Queen is the only band in the world where every member has written at least three number ones, meaning that the whole band is in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Bill Withers, the singer-songwriter of Ain't No Sunshine, was a factory worker making airplane toilets when he wrote the hit song at age 31. After the song hit gold, the record company presented him with a gold toilet marking the start of his new career. The Sex Pistols were asked by their manager to write a song called Submission, hoping they would write about bondage. Instead, they wrote a song about a submarine mission. Richard Bear Barry, the original composer of the song Louie Louie, sold his rights to the song for $750 in 1959 before it went on to be one of the most recorded songs in rock history. In the 1980s, he threatened action against the publishers and they settled out of court, making him a millionaire. Richie Havens created the song Freedom spontaneously at the Woodstock Festival as he had nothing else to play but needed to continue performing as the other acts were delayed. It became his most famous song. He then had to watch the 
the Woodstock movie to learn how to play it. Pink Floyd keyboardist Richard Wright was fired from the band by Roger Waters during album production for The Wall, but stayed on as a salaried musician. Wright stayed on salary for the album's elaborate tour and was thus the only member of the band to profit from it, which lost about $400,000. During a brief power outage at a Nirvana concert in Munich, Chris Novoselic joked, we're on the way out. Grunge is dead. Nirvana's over. It would be Nirvana's last concert before Cobain's death. Noel Gallagher of Oasis put his mansion in Ibiza up for sale because his neighbor was James Blunt. He couldn't stand the thought of Blunt writing crap tunes up the road. Frank Zappa once got on stage during a Velvet Underground show, a tonally played the keyboard, and shouted the names of random vegetables for a whole minute. Then he walked off stage, and the show continued normally. The rapper Flo Rider tests his upcoming songs at strip clubs first to check if girls are dancing to it before releasing them. When Brian May wrote The Show Must Go On for the Queen album Innuendo, Freddie Mercury was in the late stages of AIDS and was often bedridden. Brian was worried Freddie wouldn't have the strength to do the song, so Freddie tossed back a shot of vodka, said, I'll do it, darling, and did the song in one take. The backing vocals on You're So Vain by Carly Simon is Mick Jagger. The bass on the song is played by Klaus Vormann, who was one of the Beatles' best friends and who designed the cover of their album, Revolver. When I'm 64 was one of the first songs Paul McCartney ever wrote in the 50s. By the time the Beatles recorded it in the late 60s, his voice had gotten deeper, so the vocals are sped up on the song to make him sound like a teenager. Eric Clapton wrote the song Wonderful Tonight in frustration of his then-girlfriend, Patty Boyd, making them late for a party by constantly changing her outfit. Every time someone smokes a cigarette, seven minutes gets added to Keith Richards' life. Eddie Van Halen agreed to play the guitar solo for Michael Jackson's Beat It under two conditions, that he not get credited for it and that nobody told his band. Rock singer Mark Bolin refused to learn how to drive, fearing that he would die young in an automotive accident. In 1977, Bolin died at age 29 in a car crash when a car, driven by his girlfriend Gloria Jones, hit a tree. After the Smiths broke up and the band members were in court over royalty rights, the judge ranked them by IQ, with Marr, probably the more intelligent of the four, Rourke and Joyce, unintellectual, and Morrissey, presumably somewhere in between. There's a band called 311, which is the police code for indecent exposure in Omaha, Nebraska. The name was given after one of the band members was arrested for streaking naked. The Pogues took their name from the phrase Pogue Mahone, which in Gaelic means kiss my arse, and the frontman Shane McGowan was once in a band called the Nipple Erectors. In 2006, Gnarls Barkley removed their hit single Crazy from music stores after it remained at the top of the British charts for nine weeks so people would remember the song fondly and not get sick of it. The Nirvana song About a Girl was written by Kurt Cobain about his then-girlfriend Tracy Miranda, partially inspired by their fights over Cobain's refusal to do household chores. The song Tubular Bells, most famous for being the theme to The Exorcist, was written and recorded by a 19-year-old Mike Oldfield in 1973, who played almost entirely all the instruments on the song. The full song is over 20 minutes long and is featured on an album of the same name. A student once sent John Lennon a letter stating his teacher was conducting a class analyzing the Beatles' songs. This act inspired the song I Am the Walrus, as the whole purpose of the song, according to John, was to confuse, befuddle, and mess with the Beatles' experts. The number one pop song, Love Yourself, performed by Justin Bieber, was written by Ed Sheeran who later stated that the original title of the song was actually Yourself. The choreography for Beyonce's All the Single Ladies was based on a 1969 dance called Mexican Breakfast, choreographed by Bob Fosse. Taylor Swift once mistakenly released an eight-second song on iTunes, which was just white noise, called Track 3. It instantly became number one on iTunes in Canada. The song Uptown Funk is not a song by Bruno Mars. It was actually written by British producer Mark Ronson, and Mars is simply featured on the track. Kanye West went to jail for one day in 2008 for breaking a paparazzi's camera, and when he got there, he used his one phone call on ordering takeout Chinese food. There is a classic Dutch Christmas song called Flappy, about a boy who kills his dad after his dad serves his pet rabbit for Christmas dinner. Bruce Springsteen wrote a song for the Ramones after Joey Ramone asked him to. However, his manager convinced him to keep it, as songs Bruce gave to other artists kept becoming hits, while Bruce didn't have big hit singles yet. That song 
song ended up being Hungry Heart, Bruce's first top five single. Frank Zappa intended his 1982 song Valley Girl to be a mocking satire of California's teen culture, but ironically, the song's success instead popularized the Valley Girl accent nationwide, so much so that a film titled Valley Girl was released a year later. The his in the song Killing Me Softly with His Song refers to Don McLean. The original performer, Lori Lieberman, was deeply moved hearing him perform in the early 70s. Nirvana once recorded a cover of Cher's song Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves with Chris Novoselic on vocals. Here's a snippet. The song Respect was popularized by Aretha Franklin, but it was originally composed and recorded by the man Otis Redding, and it was about a man getting respect from his girlfriend. Axl Rose tried to beat up David Bowie on the set of a bondage rock and roll video because he was flirting with his girlfriend. The two-fingered rock-on hand gesture most rockers embrace was made popular by Ronnie Dio when he was part of Black Sabbath. It's called Sign of the Horns, and it's something his grandmother used to do to ward off Malachio, the evil eye. Sister Rosetta Tharp, the godmother of rock and roll, was a pioneer in her guitar technique in the 1930s and 40s. She was among the first popular recording artists to use heavy distortion on her electric guitar, and her technique had a profound influence on Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Keith Richards. Elvis is the only person ever to be inducted into the rock and roll, country, R&B, and gospel halls of fame. Rock and roll pioneer Richie Valens had a fear of flying due to a freak accident where two airplanes collided over his school's playground, killing or injuring many of his friends. He got over this fear due to the demands of his career and subsequently died in a plane crash at the age of 17. Bob Seger forgot to credit himself for the lyrics on old-time rock and roll because he didn't think anybody would like it and was disgusted to see it used in a Hardee's commercial years later. While filming the music video for It's Only Rock and Roll, But I Like It, Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones nearly drowned in deep bubbly water as the band forgot that a drummer plays sitting down when they were filling their tent with bubbles. Eric Clapton is the only musician to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame three times. He's been inducted as a member of the Yardbirds Cream and for his solo career. Queen of Rock and Roll, Janis Joplin was voted ugliest man in a University of Texas magazine. The British rock band Radiohead released their album In Rainbows under a pay what you want pricing strategy where customers could even download all their songs for free. In spite of the free option, many customers paid and they netted more profits because of this marketing strategy. Sonic Youth's highly experimental 2000 album NYC Ghosts and Flowers was the result of the band's irreplaceable guitars and effects pedals being stolen in 1990. ACDC's Angus Young created high voltage rock and roll using the chords ACDC. The album cover for the Smiths' self-titled album features a photograph of a topless young man. The image, which was controversial at the time, is a still from Andy Warhol's film Flesh and features actor Joe D'Alessandro. The Stone Roses' iconic Lemon logo was inspired by the May 1968 riots in Paris. During the riots, lemons were used by protesters to counteract the effects of tear gas. Richie Edwards of the Manic Street Preachers once carved the words for real into his arm with a razor blade during an interview to prove the band's sincerity. This act of self-harm left him needing 18 stitches. Joy Division's debut album Unknown Pleasures was recorded at Strawberry Studios in Stockport, England, which was reputedly haunted. The eerie atmosphere of the studio reportedly contributed to the album's haunting and atmospheric sound. In the 1960s, radio stations refused to play Cher's first single, Ringo, I Love You, because they thought her low voice was a gay man singing a love song about the Beatles drummer, Ringo Starr. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club's band name comes from Marlon Brando's motorcycle gang in the 1953 film The Wild One. Apple reportedly paid U2 100 million as part of a deal to install their album Songs of Innocence for free automatically onto Apple users' devices, which caused an outrage amongst them. Alice Cooper formed a celebrity drinking club in the 1970s called the Hollywood Vampires. You could only join the club if you could outdrink all members, which included Keith Moon, Ringo Starr, Mickey Dolenz, Harry Nilsson, John Belushi, and John Lennon. Brian Eno created ambient music while recovering from an accident. A record was playing too quietly and he was unable to leave his bed to increase the volume. Only just being able to hear the music over the outside rain gave him the idea for music that didn't impose itself on someone's space. 
In the late 60s, Rolling Stones guitarist Brian Jones purchased an old house that belonged to A.A. A. Milne, author of the Winnie the Pooh books, and the 100-acre wood was based on the estate. Brian Jones was found dead floating in the pool in 1969. In 1972, during a John Lennon and Chuck Berry live TV duet, the sound engineers muted Yoko Ono's mic because she kept screaming into it. In 1969, English rock guitar legend Jeff Beck canceled plans to play Woodstock and flew back home to London because he heard his wife was having an affair with the gardener. The band Len was given $100,000 to film the music video for Steal My Sunshine. They flew two dozen friends to Florida and broke their hotel elevator loading all their alcohol into it. Then they just filmed themselves relaxing and riding around in the afternoons when the hangovers wore off. Weezer's Buddy Holly music video was included on the Windows 95 installation CD without the band's prior permission. When Prince passed away, he had enough unreleased music written in his vault that he could make an album every year for the next century. Dave Grohl was so intimidated by Kurt Cobain that he hid a lot of the music he made while on tour with Nirvana. After Cobain's death, the tucked away music would become Foo Fighters' first album. He played every instrument on it, bar one guitar part, and recorded it in one week. Singer Rod Stewart took cocaine anally to protect his singing voice. Stewart bought anti-cold capsules, removed the contents, filled the empty capsules with cocaine, and put them up his butt to be absorbed. Bob Dylan offered the song Lay Lady Lay to the Everly Brothers, but Don Everly rejected it because he thought it was about lesbians. The Four Seasons hit, December 1963, Oh What a Night, was originally set in 1933 with the title December 5th, 1933, and celebrated the repeal of Prohibition. The lyrics were changed at the behest of Frankie Valli to reset the song as a remembrance of a man's first affair with a woman. Britney Spears' music was used by the British Navy to ward off Somali pirates. Hits, including Oops, I Did It Again, and Baby One More Time, were employed to scare off pirates along the east coast of Africa. Because what's more intimidating than the sound of Britney singing, Oh Baby Baby. Brian Wilson was obsessed with the Ronettes' Be My Baby. He had copies of it all over his house, compared it to Einstein's theory of relativity, and called it the best song ever recorded. This obsession led him to write Don't Worry Baby specifically for Ronnie Spector, though Phil Spector, aware of Brian's fixation, ultimately rejected it. Interestingly, Sonny and Cher sang backup vocals for the Ronettes in Be My Baby, and this marked the beginning of Cher's journey as their backup singer. The Rolling Stones were equally captivated by the power of backup vocals. In their song, Gimme Shelter, the backup singer's voice was so impressive that you can hear the band members hooting in the background on the final recording. The backup singer was Mary Clayton, who was also one of the backup vocalists on Leonard Skinner's Sweet Home Alabama. Also on backing vocals was Clyde e. King, who was reportedly secretly married to Bob Dylan and had two children by her. In 1965, Bob Dylan said that if he ever sold out to a commercial interest, it would be ladies' garments. In 2007, he and his music appeared in a Victoria's Secret commercial. Ella Fitzgerald worked for the Mafia, got sent to boarding school, ran away, and was living on the streets when she debuted at the Apollo Theater, all by the age of 17. In 1953, Louis Armstrong met Richard Nixon at an airport in Japan. Nixon said, Hi Pops, can I do anything for you? And Louis, who had his marijuana stash in his case, asked Nixon to carry it for him through customs because he was an old man. Ray Charles wrote, What Did I Say? by improvising on the spot during a live performance. He needed to fill 12 minutes of time, and the song is what he came up with. 1965, Dylan said that if he ever sold out to a commercial interest, it would be his garments. In 2007, he and his music appeared in a Victoria's Secret. The Beatles opened for Little Richard before they had a record deal. The Rolling Stones opened for him as unknowns. Jimi Hendrix started in his band, and James Brown's big break was as a Little Richard impersonator playing shows Little Richard had been double booked for. In 1964, on the night before the Drifters were to record their legendary hit, Under the Boardwalk, vocalist Rudy Lewis was found dead from a likely heroin overdose. Rather than reschedule the studio session, the part was given to the group's former lead vocalist Johnny Moore. Dying at the age of 27 made Lewis an early member of the 27 Club. Western music was often bootlegged in the USSR, using discarded X-rays. This was known as Musica Nacostiax, or Music on the Bones. After a concert by The Who in March 1976, groundskeepers at the Anaheim Stadium in LA reported that more than 100 marijuana plants sprouted on the playing field. 